America's Devastating Petroleum Politics, Avoidable, Unnecessary, Expensive Oil Addiction Energy Crisis by Larry Hartwig, Zedmaster at ZeroEnergyDesign.com. America used to be the world's largest producer and exporter of petroleum, but in 1971, our domestic production peaked and has been declining ever since, making us increasingly dependent on foreign oil. Something similar is about to happen worldwide as we have an unprecedented supply and demand crisis. Jimmy Carter created the U.S. Department of Energy. Their weatherization assistance program has been the most successful program in the world at reducing energy consumption, having improved five and a half million low-income homes by reducing their energy bill requirements 31 percent. Carter had a plan to end all oil imports in only eight years. He created solar energy tax credits, but he was very unpopular with the large oil companies. Oil companies paid to elect Ronald Reagan. Reagan decontrolled oil prices but did not fill our strategic oil reserves. He created new subsidies for the companies that import oil. This resulted in huge oil payments to radical terrorist countries. Reagan created an uneven playing field for non-petroleum energy development. His energy policy, in essence, was oil addiction and climate change. He ended the Carter Solar Tax Credits, which killed many of the new alternative energy companies. Reagan removed Carter's solar panels from the White House. He sold weapons of mass destruction to Iraq and to Iran. A million people died in bloody U.S. oil-funded Iran-Iraq war. But Reagan was a very popular international trendsetter. Should he be imitated? His policies impact us today. Oil company lobbyists paid our politicians to create the U.S. imported oil energy policy. Trillions of U.S. dollars have sadly flowed to Persian Gulf. Saudi Arabia is the largest oil exporter. Fifteen of the 19 9-11-2001 hijackers were Saudis. Like Reagan, the Bush campaigns were funded by big oil companies. The Bush family has always had close ties to Saudi Arabia. Dick Cheney's secret 2001 oil task force called on eventually convicted oil and gas criminals like Ken Lay, the dishonest CEO who brought down Enron. In 2002, half of the U.S. vehicle purchases were inefficient SUVs because of subsidized gasoline prices. The 2005 Republican energy bill increased subsidies by $14 billion to companies that import foreign oil. This made our bad oil addiction even worse. After these subsidies were created, the Exxon CEO made $190,000 per day. Oil companies are the highest profit companies worldwide. Do we really need to subsidize them? A true democracy is a representative form of government where the needs of the many outweigh the greedy desires of a few profiteers. Seventy percent of Americans disapprove of our president's actions. Seventy-eight percent disapprove of Congress. Do politicians represent you? Is America a democracy? December 2007, 82% of Americans wanted to repeal the bad oil company subsidies. House Resolution 6 passed by a wide bipartisan margin, but 40 corrupt senators blocked it on December 13, 2007. By subsidizing oil companies, we line the pockets of their top executives and encourage consumers to buy inefficient SUVs. Alan Greenspan understands the complex American economy at least as well as any economist. When he released his new book, The Age of Turbulence, Greenspan stressed that the U.S. must end our bad addiction to oil. He is calling for a phased-in $3 per gallon tax on gasoline. 20% of gasoline pump price is taxes. 
Pork barrel politicians would lose money if your SUV was more efficient. Gasoline is a heavy, regressive tax on the poor who cannot afford it. Senator John Edwards asks the great moral question of our generation. Why have we not addressed the issue of climate change and global warming? I'll tell you why. No question about it. Oil companies, gas companies, power companies, and the lobbyists in Washington, D.C. We have to have a president who will stand up to these people. Our politicians speak with a forked tongue. They must become adept at convincing voters that they can do the impossible, satisfy the wants and needs of many constituents, with conflicting desires. In January 2007, Nancy Pelosi pushed the House of Representatives to pass H.R. 6 that would end oil company subsidies. After a 42 percent increase in the price of oil since August, on November 8, 2007, Pelosi said, we must reduce the pump price of energy and heating oil. It is impossible to increase oil company taxes and lower the price of a commodity whose supply is falling behind rising demand and the value of our dollar is going down. Oil price must ultimately rise to world market price. We need to eliminate oil addiction. We send our brave, loyal children to die in oil-related wars because we are addicted to foreign oil for inefficient SUVs. If we did not guzzle foreign oil, would Terrace have any funds at all? Chris Dodd, 26-year senior U.S. Senator and 2008 presidential candidate said, make no mistake, this war is not about getting rid of Saddam Hussein or democracy for Iraq. It is about oil. When politicians are obligated to a minority special interest group, they ignore majority opinion and even wage unpopular bloody war to support lobbyists' desires. Johnny Appleseed traveled across our new nation helping people plant fruit trees for their grandchildren. Today, Selfish baby boomers borrow trillions of dollars from their grandchildren to fight deadly wars, waste energy, destroy Earth's environment, deplete fresh water, poison the fish, put toxins on plants and animals, exploit non-renewable resources, and care little about their ugly legacy. In 2007, our U.S. national debt skyrocketed to well over nine trillion dollars to pay for our oil related war and our fourteen billion dollars in new oil company tax subsidies we borrowed from our grandchildren and from social security we now owe billions of dollars to china japan and the oil rich opec nations what will our grandchildren use for energy in the twenty first century we know for certain that most of it cannot be traditional, deadly, declining fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas. We doubt that nuclear energy can play a significant role. It is still far too expensive and inherently unsafe. Biofuels are not scalable to meet our energy needs. Hydroelectric, which is clean, has very limited growth potential. That leaves us with the altogether obvious solar, wind, tides, geothermal, and energy storage issues like batteries, compressed air, dams, and hydrogen. Sir Winston Churchill said, Americans can always be counted on to do the right thing after they have exhausted all other possibilities. Albert Einstein said, The thinking which created today's problems is insufficient to solve them. Do you expect the politicians who created our energy crisis to solve it? Did votes cast in November 2006 bring about the desired change? The solution must begin at the grassroots by people like us. The innovative energy technology that we need today was well known and proven decades ago. All that remains to be done is to educate consumers and voters and end our extremely corrupt petroleum politics.